Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. So this is part 3 of, of our Atalon MP build with the Taiyan S2466 Tiger MPX motherboard. So we have a dual Atalon MP 2000 plus, 2 gigs of uh, DDR server RAM, uh, a 9800 Pro and uh, PCI-X SATA 2 controller card on a PCI bus. So yeah, let's get into some benchmarking and see what this system can actually do. So let's open up some uh, WCPU ID here, so we can check what CPUs we have. We have an AMD Athlon MP Model 6, 1660 MHz, 266 meter bus, and we have 256 kilobyte of L2 cache. And on CPU 2 we have the same, Natalon MP, same frequency, so these are 2000 plus CPUs. And we got 2 gigs of RAM. So here we have motherboard monitor 5. So we can see our 5 volt rail here, 4.88, it's actually 506, I have measured it. We can see our CPU temperatures, our CPU fans RPM and our front fan. And uh, yeah, uh, this sensor data should be taken with a grain of salt. The CPUs don't have any temperature sensor themselves. It's located in socket, so that's just the ambient air temperature and an extrapolated temperature, a qualified guess by the motherboard what the CPUs actually are. So let's open up a Blender 2.49, so we can uh, run some proper SMP benchmarks here. So I'm gonna open a quick project I made, a bunch of cubes. I'm going to disable SMT here, so we're on one thread. So it's uh, rendering the tiles now we're on one CPU. So I'm going to open Task Manager here, so we can see the CPU, the CPU is working. So we're on 50% here. So yeah, that took about 13.73 seconds, we can see up here on the time. So let's uh, close this and uh, configure it for SMP with two threads. Let it auto pick two threads there and run it again. As you can see, it's a lot faster already. So we're gonna get time here now. Got a time of 7.68 seconds. So not half, but it's probably around 70% faster. So a nice improvement. So let's open up Cinebench here. Cinebench 2000 for our next benchmark. And we're gonna run uh, ray tracing on one CPU here. And we got a score of 22.89, so we're gonna run two CPUs now. And we got a score of 38.54, and that's a speed of 1.68, so 68% improvement. So for our next test, we run Cinebench 2003. So we're gonna run a single CPU here, and it's gonna take about two minutes. So we're gonna fast forward here. So we got a score of 208 points, so we're gonna run the SMP benchmark now. So we got uh, 382 points and a 1.83x increase, so 82%. This is quite a lot faster than uh, an Atlan XP overclocked to 2.4 GHz when I checked some online results. For our next benchmark, I want to benchmark 7-zip. It supports multi-threading, so does WinRAR 3.6. So we can see here both CPUs are working, roaring, a, well, sipping a folder. We can see there, almost 98% uh, CPUs to use there. 7-zip also has a built-in benchmark which is quite handy, so we can run that to get uh, an idea of how it performs with one and two cores. 
So I set it to two CPUs here. So it's going to benchmark now. So you can see how it performs with one and two CPUs. Right now it reports 175% CPU usage. So one CPU would be 100% and two would be 200%. So decompressing now, it's all, almost peaked out at 199 it says, 200. And there we have it, we have a total rating of 188%, so an 88% increase over a single CPU. So yeah, 7 zip benefits a lot from 2 CPUs. So now I want to run HD Tune here, which will benchmark our SSD and mechanical hard drive. So I'm going to the benchmark settings, setting to fast, so we get a fast benchmark here, and 64k sectors. So we can here see the SSD, the SanDisk, it's running at about uh, 142 megabytes per second maximum here. So I have an average of 142 megabytes per second. So I'm gonna select the hard drive now and do the same thing for that. So maximum is right now 111 megabytes per second. It's gonna start dropping off at the end here now since mechanical hard drives get slower and the further in you get on the platters. And it's doing some uh, random access here, so you can get the access time. 15.4 milliseconds, so yeah. And our average was 98 megabytes per second. So I'm going into settings again to set the block size here to 8 megabytes. We don't have to have it that high, but it's gonna max out the performance of the SSD here. Because I think the chipset is the limit limiting factor here. So this will show us our theoretical max speed we can do. Right, right now it's at 172.8 megabytes per second here maximum. So we ended up in an average score of 170 megabytes per second and a max of 173. So I'm gonna do the same for the hard drive here. So right now we have 127 megabytes per second max. And we start to drop off here as the heads go get closer to the spindle. So we ended up in an average of 101.5 megabytes per second, and a minimum of 54, and a maximum of 127 megabytes per second. And it's doing the random uh, now access time here, 15.3 megabyte meg milliseconds. Pretty fast. For our next benchmark, we have Quake 3 here. So I'm gonna run the first one without SMP. So I'm setting time demo one here and then uh, checking the SMPs off. And then I'm running the demo. And got a score of 221.6 FPS. So now we're turning on SMP and doing a restart. And we're running uh, the demo here. And we got a score of 260.8 FPS. For our next benchmark, we will run Quake 4. So I have uh, on the left, SMP disabled and on the right SMP enabled. So we're running a time demo here. The minimum specification for Quake 2 is an Athlon XP2000 Plus. So these MPs are meeting the minimum spec. But having two of them obviously helps.
So as you can see, the SMP enabled demo finished a lot faster for nine frames per second, and uh, the uh, single threaded one finished a lot later. So I quick forward that, uh, and it ended up at 29 frames per second, so about a 70% increase in performance, and uh, this makes Quake Quake 4 quite playable with SMP. I wouldn't call it playable without it. Our next benchmark will be Doom 3 because we want to compare it to Quake 4. Doom 3 came out in 2004 and Quake 4 came out in 2005 and they both used ID Tech 4 engine. But Doom 3 never got any SMP patch. So this runs on a single core. Uh, same settings except for one thing that is turned down to get the minimum frame rate up. So this this is slightly lighter to run in that regard, but it still performs worse due to lack of SMP. So you can see below 20 FPS sometimes. I wouldn't call uh, Doom 3 particularly playable. You can play it, but it's not uh, not a nice experience on this machine. It really requires like an Atlon 64 and like a 6800 GT, a GeForce, from my experience to maintain like 60 FPS. We've got 34.2 and I would expect about 30 FPS with the same settings as like Quake 4. The next game I want to run is Halo. It has a built-in benchmark and as far as I know it doesn't support SMP but it's a good game, it's a beautiful game. So I figure I include it. It's quite difficult to run. It was originally developed for the PowerPC Mac and then released on the Xbox and the PC. And you should really have a GeForce 3 card or better to play this. It uh, exploits the feature of the GeForce 3 and the Xbox was partially or partially based on the GeForce 3. It's basically a GeForce 3 GPU in that as far as I know. So it kind of makes sense that it wants that. The Covenant network is absolute chaos. From what I've been able to piece together, their leadership the ordered flood all ships to abandon Halo when it. they found the flood. The Covenant they were too terrified late. the flood will repair the ship and use it to escape from Halo. They sent in a strike team I've to neutralize good luck on the Captain flood Keys and repair the ship for immediate signal. departure. He's alive, and the implants are intact. There's some interference from the cruiser's damaged reactor. I'll bring us in as close as I can. Oh, I see. The coordinate data needs right. to be... Sorry. So, if you check the time demo.txt, we got 45.75 frames per second. So not super fast, but it's playable. Now that we have, uh, have a look, had a look at the benchmarks and have got an idea of what this system can do. So then what do I think about this system? Well. I'm pleasantly surprised about how well the AMD 760 MPX platform actually performs. From everything I read, it was basically, basically garbage. Like, this is unstable, it's crap, it's slow, and I don't, don't get it, basically. But uh, after building it and testing it, I must say I have had absolutely zero crashes, even including the Windows install. I haven't had one OS crash so far, and this is like the sixth or seventh day I'm running the system. So I got a few miles on it now. So stability-wise, super happy. Wasn't really much to need to be installed in terms of drivers. Most things worked. Ships a drive for AGP needed to be installed, then you can install your DirectX and graphics drivers. And any other add-on cards you want, but that's basically it. 
when it came to SMP performance, so dual processors, we could see a gain in around 60 and sometimes above 90 percent. I would say 65 to 70 percent was uh, the common gain in both both some like in Quake 4 games and in most compress and decompression software like WinRAR, 7-Zip, same thing with Blender, Cinebench that is based on, uh, it's like a benchmark but it's actually a real program too, back in the day at least, for 3D production, so kind of a real world benchmark but uh, yeah, I don't have the program, don't know how to use it, so. So yeah, the pros of this system, very stable, very fast with uh, both CPUs being exploited, uh, dual 64-bit 66 MHz PCI slots allows for very fast uh, controller cards like the SATA ASIL 3124 and I also like the fact that every device connected to it shows up in the BIOS individually so I can select an optical SATA drive and it boots that which is quite impressive uh, a lot of systems don't do this for this era not even my dual socket uh, Optron with basically four cores with the CPUs from 2006, doesn't even do that. It has a SIL, you know, a simpler version of this on board, but that can't, still can't do the SATA optical. So that's uh, quite annoying, that system being relatively new. So yeah, the downsides with the system is obviously no overclocking on this particular motherboard. There are other motherboards like the MSI version has overclocking support and most others, I think. And there's no higher bus option than 266 for Atron MPs, uh, same with RAM. So you, you're kind of limited by memory bandwidth, also limited by the 4 inch AGP, it seems, and the implementation of that. So it's not terribly fast on uh, high frame rate in games. So games work well as long as you don't demand the highest frame rate. And uh, power wise, it's quite a power hungry system, but two 68 watt CPUs with holding about 180 watt idle to 20 to 230 load so I actually replaced this rear fan here it was a pups tier before this is out of a power mac g4 so that's a temperature controlled fan that has its own sensor also added a resistor 27 ohms to it to get it down a bit but that allows the case coding to adapt to the ambient air and how hot it's inside the case so it can have some quiet at home while I go to LANs with this because this is gonna be my kind of crew admin slash server gaming machine so I can for example host some games one CPU can run a few gaming servers I can play still having one CPU for myself can even pin them to different CPUs so this that's gonna be quite nice and obviously with all this bandwidth to the hard drive and the SSD and gigabit network I can share files over the network on the LANs and uh, it seems quite efficient uh, uh, with low CPU usage when running the hard drive and SD flat out. So, and the network card from Intel obviously supports uh, offloading of packages, so it has hardware acceleration for that basically. And, all, and the sound card is also hardware accelerated, so it's nice. So, yeah, I would recommend building a system like this. Well, yeah, despite what I read, like I said, I'm very surprised by how stable this platform is and how well it's scaled with two CPUs. It's not 100% and you're not going to get that, not due to, due to sharing the bus and memory, but also to most software not scaling linearly with CPUs. So yeah, I would actually highly recommend that building something like this, but not if your target is only games. But if your target is, like I said, uh, uh, some 3D rendering, running some maybe a server or two on a LAN, playing with using other CPU for a game, and things like that. Or just for fun, because it's fun to build dual processor systems. So yeah, I would highly recommend the, the 760MPX platform as a retro platform if, if you can find a motherboard for a good deal that you, you want. And uh, some other ones tend to support overclocking like the MSI and so on. And, you can get some more performance out of them. But you, you are limited to the 266 bus. But you can mod, mod the L5 bridge to put in Atom XPs. And you can technically think put in Atom Thunderbird, but the MPX platform doesn't support it officially at least. So how that works out, I don't know. 
Our plan is to bring this computer to our next Brain Drain lawn in 2022 on the 4th of February here in Sweden. So if you want to join us, you can check out our social media per page, braindrainlawn.tk. Or you can check out our previous LAN video that Victor Bart so nicely produced. So I'm going to link to his uh, video on his YouTube page, so you can check it out. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage, braindrainlawn.tk, and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter-Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members' private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.